um, or doing two stops. About to get underway is mid so pause up in the, in the red spot. Um, grid spot, sorry. Uh, let's get underway. All right, Midzi and Griffiths now lining up in that in those first row slots. Chris B and Rusty behind them. It's gonna be a very competitive start here. A lot of good drivers here in the front first few rows of the grid. Of course, got the Mercedes and the Ferraris looking to try and fight their way back. And of course, Racer will be trying to get into the top ten on the start, trying to build as many positions as he can, but not to get, try not to take any damage if he can over the course of the start because that could jeopardize the entire race. Right then, the last driver is now lining up, and it's time to get this one underway. At long last, the first race of the McKinn Division, Season 8 in the Summit League Racing Championship. Midzi on pole, five lights in front of the drivers. Lights on, away we go, and it's already a drive for the penalty for, com for combat for a jump start, so that's definitely not what he would have wanted to do. Midzi's led away he absolutely perfectly here. He leads down towards that first corner. It's Griffiths in second place, followed closely by Crispy in third. Mike trying to go around the outside. Griffiths shuts him off there, so but really great start on the McLaren up front from Midzi. Race Roll has dropped back behind him. He's now down to 13th place. Like I say, give my saying, great start from the McLaren. The Haas is on the right-hand side looking to try and pass. Griffiths in the Alpha Tari to get that place done. Up into P2, nice and secure here as Mr. Ogwin passes behind. And there may have been an... I thought there was an instant in the back, but it's just Merck moving up to the pack. It's still Midzi then leading the way. But almost a second here to Crispy and then Griffiths in third. Rusty fourth and crowding up into fifth. But what a great start that has been for the McLaren. I keep saying it, but really good start there. It's actually a clean one, uh, sample in two, or the first sector. It's not been a clean first lap yet, but of course, v 2 come back, getting the drive through. It's basically ruined as a race right from the start, uh, unless the safety car uh, comes out. That is combat's race. It's basically over before it's even restarted. And uh, Mr. Bitsy is the trying to pull out of DRS already. He's deep with a one second gap, already slurting with it. If, it, if Bitsy gets out of DRS, I struggle to fear um, I have an answer to the club in this race. Uh, let's see what the big winners are, and then uh, um, get the positions up. Uh, let me. The looks of it, it's uh, um, a crowding, I think. Yep, three places it's gained from his eighth place starting spot, and of course, um, that is, that is Merck's, uh, lost his front wing, and Bennett is there in the back as well, so he may, have, he may have got a piece of that. BSC deployed then on the opening lap, so not how we want to start the season with an incident. Regardless, Midzi up, still up front here as he leads the first lap of the season. A gap closing a little bit there, Crispy closing in down the main straight, so. We're back at, or Midzi now back within DRS range in the McLaren, so not what he, not what he would have wanted to see. He definitely would have liked to pull away over the start of this opening phase of the Grand Prix, just try and get out of DRS range. And Combat's using this opportunity now to serve his drive through penalty, which is, of course, is a great opportunity for him. Merckx is now in the pits. Combat will be behind a decent amount, but he's still got he's still got a long race to go, and he's now got no penalty to think about, so that is all good for him. Yes, that is, um, as we're going back away from the bench state to go, Let's see where Mitzi can pull out of the DRS as the white celebrity has gone again, which is great. <laughs> so, yeah, Mitzi has now got 1.1 second one gap. There's been a move for P7. That's Mr. Rugby in the red ball getting past Zydra. Here comes Zydra back up the inside, though, looking. Oh, Ogwin's lost it, got a bit scrolly there, and Zydra's away. And here comes. That's going to allow his teammate as well to get involved. That's like Connor. As Connor goes, I don't think he'll fight this too hard. Oh, he's almost lost control of the car there. Yeah, he saved it, all good. That's not good to Red Bull teammates colliding. And the ETSM, uh, P10, uh, actually the first, the um, also strategy runners, which is crucial. Um, I know that it's Sam O'Connor, a very good friend of the track, so if they know about it too much, and Sam will just try and keep him in the rest of this train, which will really help them later on. As, um, oh, I've noticed Corey has dropped out, and is close to dropping out of DRS to uh, Crowley, so he uses battery, and um, try to keep him in the more second window. As, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a gap between uh, him and uh, the Aston Martin. As Corey is really struggling, and uh, he isn't, he isn't on tech at the moment. His DRS has been made by the slab. Here we go. This, this, this is where it gets interesting. Well, Mid Midzi's already pulled away, but once we get to the, um, once we get to out of turn three, that's when it all starts to potentially get interesting because Griffiths is right on the back on the back of Crispy as they make their way through the opening few corners. I, d I don't know if we have, have enough to really go for a position. Of course, Rusty's a lot closer to him than he is to Crispy in, in front of him. So it looks like everyone's yeah, got everyone's gone away. Okay, not not enough for straight for to go for a move unless you're really close. I, I would imagine that the top six are pulled away now that Corby has now lost the arrest. So crowding that's actually very crucial for everyone on the alternate strategy, of course, as well, because they need to be as close to the front guys as possible. As there's a move for P3 that is rushing to get past Griffiths, uh, and that is Aston Martin up into P3. Let's see whether crowding can follow suit. To the right hand, uh, I, I think it could be a bit foolish to go for a move there. Um, Could get it here on the so DRS. He could do, but the, 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 the famous DRS trains are just so powerful and um, very hard to break. Uh, although Rusty gets proven this wrong, making the move. An unlawful force part of the circuit into the hairpin, and that 
has rusted now up into P3. He's going to chase off the crispy uh, in, in the house. As, uh, as, uh, I've also noticed that Connor has now lost the arrest to his teammate Ogilvy and Satis. He also strategy to run his team with more annoyed because they now haven't got the arrest in this, in this group of cars. So, uh, that's also the strategy runner that's actually quite worried. They might have to get past Connor very soon. But the soft tyres at this stage will still be faster as Mitzi has now got 1.4 second lead gap out in front. Let's see if Rusty uh, into P2. Yes, has set the fastest snap. Will Chris, uh, Rusty go for a medallion inside instead? Oh, he he's not going to go for it. it. He Only it. just. He may be able to get him out of turn yeah. three. If he stays close, Maybe. but Crispy's getting away, so it'll make his job a lot harder. He's, got, he's using the ERS though, the overtake mode being deployed. He's closing in, he had to go very audacious, go, on the late, go late on the brakes in order to go for it, and he's definitely smart in that, so he stays in line for the time being. No real change to the order with this DRS strain so far. Crowding still harassing the back of Griffith's car in the Alpha Tauri. He's, he's had a decent first sector and could potentially go for it here. Look, stays in line though, of course. As I say, very smart. Still very early on in the race. Don't want to jeopardise yourself too early. But the Aston Martin's definitely running very well so far. But definitely not as good as Midzi. He's got a 1.6 second advantage, so he's doing really good so far. Yeah, I would imagine the pit window for the soft tyres is around that 10 to 12. I would imagine that's going to be soft tyres when we come into the pitch. And even then, the delta will be uh, horrible. And the media, sorry, the Austin strategy runner is just, just, just off the catch up. Although there is a massive gap between the Red Bulls, but, uh, between Esla Connor and ETSM. Um, oh, sorry, uh, Ogwin, Ogwin and Connor, and Sam, um, uh, the first officer strategy runner in the mediums. But for the first bite, he's actually still got a fair bit of battery, so he might want to use that at some point because Connor's clearly struggling to keep in the field. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Although Connor's battery is really low, it's 50%, but he's got that massive gap he has to contend with as uh, let's see if there's a move down to turn one. Here comes uh, Rusty, though, he's, making the, he's going for a move on the right hand side. He's drawn alongside Crispy. In towards that first corner, he's gotten clear of the hat as well. So move Rusty up to P2, then higher Ooh, up in the it's, order. Uh, Griffith's almost hit the back of Crispy then, um, trying to get involved. So uh, that was close to so Griffith's almost hitting or losing his front wing. That would have been detrimental to his race as uh, yeah, the top five has a bit of a gap. Although, actually, now I say that, Corbett has got back up in DRS. Oh, and there's been an incident behind. It's Ghost Colt, who's lost his front wing, it looks things. Goes Colton the Alpine. Wait, well, no, he hasn't lost from uh, that's me being blind. <laughs> yeah, but no, I think he just had spin. Unfortunately, um, for the Alpine there keeps himself going again. No, no damage by the looks of it. So, like I say, that's me, just me being blind. Yeah, as um, the test of all the runners, um, Power Quicks is now the, the, uh, the first guy on the mediums. He's already got, or Mitzi has already got a second gap in five laps to the to the medium runners. Uh, so, he is looking quite untouchable in this race. Um, uh, fighting back from last season like a uh, true champion would uh, or run a rough way I guess as Connor runs wide um, and that's going to allow uh, Paraquist to get through um, so Connor clearly struggling on the soccer pad tyres and that's powered through uh, up into P9 but uh, let's see what the gap is uh, to uh, just under days. 4 seconds a 4 second gap to, to, to catch up on the it's going to be hard for power to do that with the soccer matter and the arrest train. Let's see if there's any moves down to turn one then. For this lead train, it's been two pulls away. It's 1.7 seconds. There's going to be any moves. As uh, Prisby hang on to the arrest of Rusty quite well. I think everyone's staying in formation just for now. Although, we've knocked up massively. They, they might allow Zydrad uh, to be able to uh, get involved. I think they are okay. As the top eight uh, in the world of their own at the moment. Yeah, um, quick. The the field. yeah, quite a way back there for the Haas and everyone else, of course, on that Alton strategy. Race roller hasn't had the best of starts here. Of course, that the, the fact that the, the field stretched out a bit more would definitely won't help him. He lost a place on the start, if I'm not mistaken. I believe he, didn't he, he started P11, if I'm not mistaken, or did he start oh, P12? Oh, he's gets past Rixie um, oh. in P14. I did tell you, he, he is bringing the race and jumped up, up three positions from where he started. Uh, and also, he's crucially, he's still the DRS and Monkey, although, like we said, the gap between the fields is a bit larger than what the medium tyre runners would have wanted. That is Jib Jan up, up into P14. Uh, so, make some moves. Uh, so let's see if any, any other moves down. As I think Ogle might be close to Zydrad. Uh, it's a two tenth gap. Uh, Ogle is going to stay behind for now. MP8 in that Red Bull. There's uh, a gap between Mid and Rusty, just, um, just, uh, just under two seconds, but the gap is rising. As it stands, as Rusty is actually quite low battery, I presume, trying to pull this train along and try and catch the McLaren. Although Mitzi is proving that he has a lot of race pace until they until they've had McLaren, and yeah, he is out front. 
Here comes Rusty though. Sorry, here comes Crispy. Rusty was trying to break the toe there. Looks Crispy go for it. No, he doesn't. He stays behind. He definitely, he definitely could have gone for it. If he'd gone late on the brakes, he could have tried it. But that, that could have been, that would be a huge risk to both of these two, both, potentially ruin both their races. He's going to have another go, making his way down towards turn number four. And once again, just not close enough. He goes very late on the brakes, they're trying to close in. He does close in for a second. There's a yellow flag. And that's Merckx off the track. Does he have damage? He may have just spun off there. Yeah, it looks all good. So Merckx clearly having a troublesome day. Uh, I know he hasn't raced for a long while. I think this is his first league race for I think over a year. Well, at least he's a full-time driver. So but it's clearly uh, struggling to get to grips and, and being pushed straight in the McKean division. Um, but Merckx, yeah, not having a good first race uh, in Ferrari. Uh, meanwhile, his team at Monkey is a P13 has been knocked out in Q1. So the Ferrari's not having a good day, uh, at least so far anyway. Yeah, uh, uh, save, save for Merckx, the, uh, the Ferrari and the two Mercedes cars that have done really well so far and trying to work their way back from that disappointment in Q1. So yeah, doing very well on that front. I'm keeping my eye on, cr on crowding here. Could potentially go for a move down the main straight on Griffiths. He's about three, three and a half tenths behind. So he's definitely got a chance down this main straight. To make the way to the last corner here. Try and get as close as he can. Try and stay close on the exit as well. He's almost lost. He's got a bit scrolly there at the last corner. But he's still close to three. Go for a move. He hasn't got much, much ERS left. But he probably could have enough to go on the attack. But he's not going to. It looks like that. Slide off the last corner, mate. Who's lost DRS? Who's lost DRS? Who's lost DRS? Oh, that is unfortunate. There. He didn't have DRS on the main straight, and he's not in DRS range again for the next straight. So he's very vulnerable. Side drag has got a little battery. Yellow flag. That's combat. Who spun off in the same place that Merckx did? Yep. So both of those drivers in P19 and P20 having a horrible day. Of course, combat getting the drive through his race. Yes, from goes from bad to worse, but again, those safety cars seem to be. There's, uh, this, that's Corey, as we said, out of the arrest. Um, or he might actually just be able to get back in a split. If he has a good, uh, middle sector, I think he's, he's just going to be out. So, that's going to be Corey under Oh, Crowning, Crowning looked like he was looking for it for a minute. Chris, oh, yeah, as a uh, Crispy, also very much on the bubble, because there's some DRS to Rusty. Uh, it was 9 temps, but I, th I think that if he has more arrest, so it should be fine. Yeah, but it's now a 7 temp gap, so too much um, to worry about this, this, this train is still um, stuck together which I'm not surprised until the pit window because like I said around sort of that 10 to 12 uh, you want to be fitting the medium tyres on um, and like I said the medium, the medium pit window is about, about 80 ish because obviously you get fresh tyres for getting knocked out and qualifying so uh, about that's something that obviously there's also there's a massive crash uh, you know, the in the same corner we saw earlier that is that's the third the time it's ghost cult in the alpine yeah. once again no damage from the alpine but looks at it i think he's, he's got enough to keep going yep so that's Esther bennett uh, up to p17 and what happened in the good first day is he was as we had the first pit stop that did see him building and the medium tires that was very early um he's gonna those tires go a very long way it is possible but I don't think it's the ideal time to pit. He wants an undercut. And crucially, more crowding, get out of traffic as crowd close car pulls into the pits. There might be a retirement in the pit lane. He's got a penalty as well for speeding. So, yeah, and there he is. Yeah. First retirement of the season yeah. in the McKean division, and that's Ghost Con, the Alphine. Yeah, and, and crucially, um, crowding is out not in traffic. He's got this gap to bed in front of him. So, crowding will have the undercut. I'm guessing that's going to trigger a lot of people to come in early than maybe what they wanted because the undercut would be quite powerful. Um, despite crowd not having DRS, of course. As a, uh, uh, also, I think I've just missed that Zydra has got past Corey from P5. I don't know if we said that, but Zydra is, is going past Corey. Um, and the crowd in pitting, that, that means that um, Griffiths now has a gap of one, two seconds. Um, because obviously, uh, crowding was the first guy for Corey trying to catch the train or try and get back on the DRS train. So that is now a bigger gap between the Avataris and maybe what they wanted. Uh, all right, well, yeah, potentially the, the decision from Crowley's pit could potentially pop to another oh, pass. So there goes Corey. Oh, 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 oh,
and he has indeed undercut Crispy. That is, and he's now behind Rusty. That's crucial for Aston Martin sticking that right together. And that is crowding a very one lap undercut, very, very good. As that's most off again uh, on the fast right hander. He is not having a good time at that corner, and uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, he'll be wanting to. I um, imagine he wants to forget this race and be going to next week. Definitely, uh, yeah. Under uh, other matters, that is crowding, um, splitting Rusty um, and Crispy, and the Aston Martins can now work together. As although Bennett is actually going to hold up this guy, so that's going to allow him to be staying out. So Bennett is sort of being a spanner in the works to the guys that are trying to um, trying to catch Mitsu on the on the undercut. I don't know if Bennett hasn't just had to move out of the way and he's not. Bennett's proven the right nuisance uh, to Rusty right now. And he, uh, Rusty's not going to get past in the middle sector, so he's going to get even more held. So, in a way, the people that are overcut it might actually benefit because Bennett is um, very much holding on Rusty. Look how, you know, look how close these two are. Just, the gap between is insane. There's a, bit, oh, a, a, hit, slight, bit, a slight tap there. No damage done to either one of these two cars. If it, if it was me, I, I'd be using Sacrifice to do the RS as. Power Quicks makes his way to the pits with, um, sorry, no, he, st he stayed out. Midzi and Griffiths making their way in, and there's contact, and there goes Bennett almost losing the car, and there goes crowding on the right hand side trying to make a move, going down towards turn one. Rusty on the DRS, and that shouldn't be, uh, should mean that Bennett isn't any more concerned to both the Aston Martins or the Haas of Crispy. Yep. Move, moves that wide, and that should be problem solved for these three for now. Start to chase after no, because of this. Midzi. Because Ben got held, because Ben held these guys up, Mitzi's actually benefited from the overcut, um, or at least the gap. The gap is still the same. So Rush hasn't really gained anything, or even lost time to Mitzi um, in that un in that undercut attempt. So that is um, very much beneficial for Mitzi, and he is now um, more fresh tyres, and he's probably going to pull away in this race. I imagine. Um, as also, uh, Griffiths has now got the task of overtaking Bennett as well. Um, he's actually lost uh, DRS because of the, the uh, undercut he's got as much to get. But, so Mids again, Griffiths didn't. That's very interesting actually. Um, it's not how good Mids' pace is, I suppose. Uh, so yeah. Griffiths is going to make a move to edit into the middle sector and Bennett shouldn't fight us too hard and he doesn't. And that is Griffiths up into um, E13. But he is very, very behind uh, the train he was once in. As uh, Zydrad is the last person to pick up the softs, he's going to have to fresh speed for everyone. And it's super interesting when he's going to come out in this race. And that is now how Craig's uh, in the lead now. It's, I think Rex Ross is going to get past 7 for P2. He is indeed the championship winner from the season. He's getting past ET Sam. So Rex is the fastest race. Right there, 1 minute 29.4. Great stuff from him there. Uh, let's see what we're saying. I don't think he is. I think he's going to sit behind Rex Ross. Race for now up into professional P2 also shadow corners. Although, uh, of course, these guys have a massive gap, you, 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 can't, you can't get how powerful the also strategy is. So, although the gap might seem big now, uh, that gap will close very quickly towards the highest edge of the race. So, I don't count power push and rest run out and get for a good result. Definitely so. not. Right, William, in definitely won't be top of Midzi right now, who still continues to hold on to a net P1 with Rusty now, second and a half back. Crowding's almost out of the RS range, but Chris is closing in. It's the hairpin, that is uh, up, in, up into P30. He's actually not, not doing too bad because he started, I think, low, low down, or sorry, in the high res of the top 10, um, sort of P7 ish, and he is now right behind Griffiths. So I think it's the net P4, I want to say, maybe P5. So that is, that's a, a good drive from Ogwin at the moment. If he can get um, Griffiths to the RS, that would be uh, very fair for his. Uh, uh, who's the next person? I think um, that's also. Uh, I think Race Roller might get DRS and power, not quite. Race Roller clearly flexing the muscles now. He's quite impatient behind Sam. He is now trying to get uh, catch up to Power Quicks. He's, of course, the um, well, hitting on the traction. He used a bit of ERS there to try and close in. He is now just within DRS range at, as Midzi sets the fastest lap. He's Race Roller going in and out of that little gap, gap but he, he wasn't there when he went to the detection zone. So he's going to have DRS here, but it's not going to have much effect he's going to close on uh, close some time down over the course of sector two and hopefully he'll get there within the by the time we hit the next DRS zone. I think Chris is gonna make a move from crowding here. Oh he had the run. I don't think he is gonna make a move but no definitely, definitely not on the final corner. Definitely on the final corner he had a lot of momentum. If he uses battery he probably would have got past so I think he's just saving his battery for now. Um as uh crowding is holding on to the arrest of rusting though the gap is saying 10. So he's actually made a mistake 
Oh, there he goes. Oh, there goes Crispy almost losing the car. And crucially, that is now Rusty free from the DRS and pressure behind him. So Rusty can now focus on Midzi. And that's Crispy. Crispy's right there on the exit. Could go for it. He's going to go for it. There he goes to the left hand side. He's got a nose in there. He has to back out of it though. Crowding holds on to the last points, paying place for the time being. And that is a net P3 for the time being, should things roll out the way they want to. I just raised a massive tongue twister of um, Idzi Rusty and Chris to be a little bit confused then. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that, is, that, is a great tongue, that is a great tongue twister there. Yeah, definitely. As, uh, yeah, as uh, Crispy is now uh, looking to get past crowding. Zydrus. Zydrus made his way past Bennett. Bennett. Bennett's fighting back here. And there goes Corey trying to go around the outside. And he does go around the outside. Very good pass there from the Williams driver and could potentially have a go at Zydra down the main straight if he gets close enough. He's got a decent amount of ERS, so we could use some of that. Zydra has no DRS, this could be tight. Corey's looking, he's got a great run go down towards that first corner. What's it gonna be? Is he gonna look to the inside, is he gonna stay in line? He's on the inside, he, got, he breaks just right and into turn number one. It's Corey now into P14 and Zydra drops back a place. Yep, and that is now, uh, I was gonna say I thought Crowley was gonna try and make a move then. Um, he was quite close enough. So the gap between Rusty and Mitzi is actually stabilising right now between two seconds and 1.9. So Rusty's going to have, have his work out if he wants to catch up. It's also, I think crucially, Mitzi is only three seconds behind the, the, the train for the old strategy runners. As much as the old the strategy is very powerful, I don't think it's going to be a pitch stop. Definitely um, not. I reckon honest. Mitzi's going to have a decent lead me and make the way out. Yeah, I think so. So I think the best thing, I think where the power of Rusty been aiming is a bank where sort of Griffiths crowding, Crispy are sort of are in that area. I think that is gettable, um, especially, especially if those guys aren't really in the, in the DRS train, they're sort of uh, scattered around. Um, so uh, that's going to be that's gonna be interesting for the strategy runners. As, uh, keep yeah, they've still got, still, got, still got five more laps, they pit-ish. Maybe early if we want to get a massive I'm keeping my eye here on, on Roller trying to take try to take the lead from Power Clips for the time being. He got close down the main straight, which just wasn't enough. So he, with a good exit here, he may have a good chance. But I doubt he's going to get that here because Power Quick is quickly pulling away. There it goes. The opportunity to potentially take the provisional P1 gone now for Race Roller. He's going to wait until the next DRS to have a go. Uh, this battle for P14 again. Sidra, Sidra, Corey, um, going at it once again. As uh, Corey gets switched back, locked off beautifully by Zydrad, and that is Zydrad now up into P14. We have DRS though, Corey fighting back on the right hand side, going down towards turn number four. It looks like Corey will get the place back, and he will get the place back. There it goes. The Alpha Terry trying to switch back though. Really good stuff here. This is great racing here. So they make the way now through the end of sector one and the start of sector number two. I wouldn't say it's over yet because Zydrad could have a go down the inside, but no, never mind. Corey just pulling away enough. We're going to have to be careful here. I think Zydrad may have locked up a little bit there. He's going to make the way through the right hander. But we're going to have another DRS straight here for this battle to continue on. So here they come now making their way through turn 10. Zydra breaking just right as they make their way through. And off the corner, he's going to, be, have, he's going to have the DRS. They make their way down this next straight. It's going to be tight. Zydra will definitely might go for it. He's going to back out. No, he's not. He's going, he's going through on the inside. And that should be P14 for him for the time being. But Corey now trying to switch back again. Here they come now back up the hill. And through the right hand. Get, stay away from the curb if they can. Corey going a bit wider on his line there. As I make the way through the end of sector two now, and the start of the last sector, Corey with a particularly poor exit there. Zydra getting away, but he's still going to have DRS, so it's definitely not over yet. But what a battle that was! It went on for almost an entire lap as Midsy now makes his way past Riggsy at the back. Yes, he's going to fly past Mercs again. Oh, is that going to be fatal for Mercs? I don't think he's got big damage. He's still going. Let's him have another spin. Yeah, I, I, I respect his dedication. To all yeah, definitely. Um, and maybe I have Zydra versus Corey for the 958 time. Is um, it? <laughs> Into one, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe a bit of wheel bang in there. Corey is behind. He didn't the best of exits, but he could still come back at Zydrad here as they make their way down the next straight. Corey's using the D using the ERS. He should have a great chance there. He's absolutely breezing past the Alpha Tari as they make their way towards the right hand of turn four. They're dead even on the exit. And there's a little bit of contact. They bang wheels once again, and they're gonna go side by side here. This can't work. Surely not. It doesn't. And around goes Corey in the Williams. Oh, that is him round. Also in the meanwhile, Max had another spin. They've been on the day, but that is, we, we saw they have a good racing, but that is overstepped the line, and, that, and I know Corey would be very frustrated with that, with Zydrad there. And also, Rudd's, um, well, they are rusty kit past Rixie <laughs> for PA. Combat's uh, the fastest lap there, one minute, 28.9. Yep. Yeah, as Rixie, um, 
is now um, falling away from the uh, ultra strategy train. Ultra strategy train, and he's sort of like falling back into the clutch of the people. Faster tyres. The race. That's Merckx. Yep. Finally bits. coming to an end for Merckx. Um, Unfortunate. Of course, uh, I did respect his dedication to keep on going despite all the spins, but of course his day had to come to an end, and this is where it has to come to an end. I'm actually quite disappointed for Max. I don't think you'd do well today, but not to me. I, th I think that's going to be a battle um, for P5. I, I thought uh, Ginger was going to go past Monkey there. Uh, it's not over yet. I mean, he's uh, got DRS, so it yeah. could be tight, but that's DRS drain could be tough to break. So I doubt that Monkey will, I doubt that monkey will lose any positions here. The Yellow flag in sector flag, one. Of course, Max goes down the inside of the division, of course, on these fresh tyres. I don't think the division will fight this too hard. He does admit to be a very great move, considering. Um, he doesn't really have to race this race too much. I mean, he's still got these in gaps with Rusty, but he's looking to get past his um, drivers as quickly as possible. Because obviously, Rusty has to go through the same train um, at, at some point, unless these guys pit. Um, as it is the medium pit, um, pit window soon. As Minty's next title. Oh, Minty's getting close there. He may have locked up. He's all, uh, all over the back of the Mercedes Rusty. here. He could get him here. He's using the ERS as well, so he Rusty should be getting jibbed up here on the run down towards the left hand and will he back out of it he might back of it no he doesn't he keeps on going and there he goes up the inside and that's p5 for the time being by half a car length and there he goes just about confirming it there to make the way through the right hander at the end of sector number two and now his next target monkey in the ferrari who's had a decent done a decent job so far and hope that he'll be facing the uh, the wrath of the mclaren who's done so well in the opening 17 laps of this race as crispy makes his way past rixie here to take away and rixie's dropping back here he may have gone wild on the exit so, so not not good for the uh, Alpine. Sem into the pits. Power Quicks also into the pits. The reigning champion race roller now leading the way. Monkey in second, Mitzi in third. That's be that's going to be about to change because here comes Mitzi towards turn number one, and there they go up the inside, and there goes Mitzi, the race leader or personal race leader, up into second place, and he now begins to chase down race roller for the lead. I ask you, where have, where have we seen this before? <laughs> I wonder where. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's 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 hope it, it doesn't go the way the last fight did between these two. Of course, not not the way not the way you want to see it. They are teammates and they're on different strategies, so I would have made sure they'd be more compliant. And there was a bit less on the line. Um, you know, Definitely there was a championship on the line this time. So uh, let's, let's get that flag. Yellow flag, and that's the Aston Martin of crowding who spun out. It was in, it's in quite a hard position as well. He was in like P5, I think. That is unfortunate. He's still he's, he's gone to gun again. He's now down to P11. I'm keeping my phone on this battle for the top spot between Midzi and Race Roller. Midzi still needs to close a bit more. He's about half a second behind as Griffiths past Riggsy now in the race. Yeah, and there goes Rusty. Past, uh, past the Great stuff there from the Aston Martin who still continues to chase down the McLaren up in, up in front of him. But he's got, still got a long way to go. The gap's still about two seconds. But here we go. The battle for the race lead is about to begin. Let's, let me, in the case of the spectacle of racing here, let's hope that Race Roller doesn't pull over and just let Midzi through. Let's hope it'll give us an entertaining battle. But let's... Obviously, we need, we need to keep it clean. Mids is going to have a great run here for this last corner with the ERS and the DRS. But Race Roller is conceding, and it looks like well, Mitzi's trying to fake. Uh, well, I think it might have been trying to fake Rusty there, but Mitzi now back in the lead. Rusty in second place. The gap is still around two seconds between those two. 1.9 to be precise. Crispy now to third. Race Roller going on to that set of soft tyres now, and he'll be on the chase over this next portion of the race with just over 10 laps to go. So I'd imagine Power Quick's going to get past Connor here um, for, P for P12 because he's leading on the strategy runner. Right, I believe he is. Connor's. Yes, he is. Yep, there he goes. Power Quick's up yep. into 8th place. And he's got a 4 second gap to the crowd, but that'll um, go down very well quickly. Just how powerful the soft tyres are, especially with no fuel and no, sorry, no fuel and into the race. Crowding um, is words out. Crowding's closing on Zydrad, so we could see a fight for 6th place going on yes. in, in a lap or so. Potentially even on this lap. And Crowding, of course, spun out about a lap ago and he's looking to try and fight back from where he was because he was running in, around, in and around the podium position so he's doing quite well though on that front. Crispy um, is now holding on to third. So in this in this part of the race I reckon it does count down to just pure pace because of course the majority of drivers are in, well everyone in the top seven is on those me, on, on those war, slightly warm medium tyres so they'll, they'll definitely get him to the end of the race. But of course Tyway does may come into play later on in the Grand Prix. Like I say, it just comes down to pure pace as to whether Rusty can catch Midzi in the next stages. If, yes, if any of that makes uh, sense. Uh, I'm interested to see what Paro finishes his race. He's already gained two seconds on, um, on uh, crowding in, in uh, two seconds. That shows how powerful the soft tyres are. Of course, that was a wedge stage towards the um, entirety of the race. 
um, or the majority of the um, race left, should I say. Um, uh, soft tyres are very powerful. I think power is looking good for around P5 world winners, I'd say. As always, low on battery, he's got totally the world of his own at the moment. I'm going to have to cut you off here because comes crowding. Look to the inside of Zydra. Gone down towards turn one. He's gone late on the brakes. There's a bit of contact there, making their way through that first corner. There's contact again. And there goes Zydra forcing Yasta Martin wide and almost off the track there. I'm assuming that, was, that wasn't intentional. Regardless, crowding still stuck behind. And here comes Proud Quakes. He's closing in now. He's within a second. He hasn't got DRS yet, so you have to wait until further into sector two. But not where you want to see contact between two drivers who've been doing so well so far in this race. Paris is going around the outside going into this next right hander. He's not going to do it though. Bang wheels. He should get a better exit, better traction. There he goes. And go down to turn two. He should have that place nice and secure, provided he doesn't lock up. And there we go. Crowding backs out. But he will he will have DRS, but I doubt it'll be enough because those soft tyres are, as you say, are very powerful. Yep. As uh is gonna get past Connor here, I believe. There it goes. Easy nine. Left hand side. Yes, as, yes, as uh, like I said, Jim Chap is not actually doing, like, I don't want to be biased here again, but Jim Chap's actually doing quite well. He's actually one of the front runners of the um, uh, also strategy. I remember he started, um, there's no doubt he won the course, so he is, I believe, P4 in the Ultra strategy race. I think he's, he is going to get a point in this race, um, providing um, he is just a soft tire circuit to a good effect. As, um, the, the guys out in front are sort of in their own races, really, like, Top six, or well, actually, sorry, top five is a uh, power Power is going to get past uh, Zydra here, P6, but the top five all in the race of the road. But Power is on the charge in that house. Sem passing yeah. Connor here to make it up into the top ten. And Jib Jab could try and make a move on the exit. He's, tra he's trying to go around the outside. He's trying to go again. There he goes. Now he's got the DRS and the ERS open, but Connor also has the DRS. But here comes the Mercedes on the right hand side, going down to turn four. Way overshot the corner there, Connor. And that it opens the door for Jib Jab to breeze on past and move up into P11. So really great stuff from him there. Unfortunate for Connor, who's doing he's, he's been doing so far. What he's been doing good so far in this race. So um, definitely seeing a lot of potential in, in him from the, just this first race. Hundred percent. And um, as said as well, of course he was um, in this division for the first time. He didn't get promoted from Division One. Um, so if he can get points in his first race, he'll be very happy uh, in that video. Because Senko was up for his team and it's not boring. Uh, we said that he's only really good at qualifying. <laughs> Although he did get spun out, to be fair. We will give him that. He did get spun out. Um, but he is currently languishing E15. As we now have um, Power has now got a 2 second out of the green. Um, who's actually got that battery, so I wouldn't imagine. I'll be fighting too hard, well, but I imagine the likes of Griffiths Crispy will be fighting Power Quicks um, and the last stage of this race. So this is now got a gap of over two seconds. He's looking very comfortable in this race. I'm saying a, a great drive in mid, so it'll be a quiet one. But meanwhile, let's keep an eye on his teammate, Race Roller, who's going, going for a move on crowding, so down towards turn one. Those soft tyres definitely coming into play now. It's still nice and fresh, and Race Roller gets the job done going up going down to that first corner. It's a two second gap next to Zydrad in the Alpha Tauri. I have no doubt that he'll catch him within the next few laps. Of course, he's trying to chase down Para in the um, in the Haas. Of course, he's also on that alternate strategy. He's, he's staying closer. The gap's staying between around 7 and 9 tenths over the course of the last lap or so. So he's doing quite well as Riggs. He gets a three-second time penalty for multiple warnings. That's the first that's the first time penalty we've seen so far tonight. Of course, Combat got a, um, a drive for penalty at the start of the race. 22 laps. That's actually quite impressive. The first drive to get penalty in 22 laps. That shows how consistent these drivers are. Uh, Prowling has gone out falling behind. He, he had that spin and now, now he's up to the points and he's probably going to get the points again this, uh, in this race because he doesn't get gobbled up by soft combat. Not tire runner, sorry. Uh, so that is now promoted jib jab up to P10 and 7 into P9. Alright, great stuff then. Power is closing now on Mr. Ogwin. He's now within DRS range so I have no doubt we try and go for a move down the main straight, potentially even earlier being, being close. I mean, of course, he's got got half the battery in, in the RS and he's make he starts to make use of it briefly on the exit. He's just closing in more and more. The gap now just over half a second as they make their way through the final corner. This one's definitely going to get tight. It's going to make their way down towards turn one. Lap number 23 beginning for the drive man in sixth place. Power Quicks in the Haas. He's closing in as they make their way towards turn one. He doesn't even need the DRS. He's going to breeze past the Red Bull here. Those medium tyres. Definitely starting to wear off now. And there goes Power into turn one. That's P5. A great point tool so far for Haas. It'll be a total of 25 points, if I'm not mistaken. If I look at who has the fastest lap as of right now, that is Power Quick. So it'll be 26 points for the Haas team. Yeah, 
as uh, in the meanwhile, Jim Chat managed to get past Sam uh, for P9. Oh, well, crowding down the race. Pits. He put, yeah, I think, I think he retired in the pits. Ah, oh, that's uh, unfortunate, though. As he was losing um, positions left, right, and center after um, that spin, he is now out of the race. And also, um, Monkey got past Connor um, as well, I uh, noticed, uh, P11. Alright, yep, Connor now dropping back those medium tyres, like I say, definitely starting to wear off. Combat still is running there down in 17th place now, of course his race was over quite a while ago. But yeah, down to 17 yep, runners in this Grand Prix. Yes, as uh, race roll is now in the spot of uh, oh, Zydrad rather, should I say. Um, I wouldn't imagine that Zydrad makes it easy for Rommler because um, Zydrad and Mitzi are pretty sure are best friends on the track. Um, but, or best friends in general. And, um, <laughs> Obviously, what happened last season, I wouldn't imagine this just going to make this too easy. Um, I would be surprised anyway if it doesn't at least um, go on the inside line um, for time one. Um, let's see, let's see then. As race roll, they get pretty, pretty good traction, all the, all the different strategies. We'll see what if as I drag defends this as Roller uh, pulls the inside. I don't want to snatch the bet, so I guess I'm not surprised by that. Um, but race roller goes up to P7. His next target is Ogwe. And there's actually Ogwe managed to stay with the rest of power, officially. That is going to pull him towards the likes of Griffiths. Um, so, good pace for Ogwe not doing his mediums, although I think Jess is still steering right now. He didn't manage to get the benefit for a lap at least. Yeah, decent math as, uh, as I drive and roller there. Uh... Uh, Sam, it's a rear of the jet trap. There goes top positions um, to the end of the race, I believe. As uh, Jim Chapter's done quite well, he's got up 7 positions as. Power's gone up 9 actually, uh, from where he starts up, so 14 on the grid. Very good job driving power up. Um, getting um, the lead of the old strategy and then using his tough soft tires to great effect. He is now looking, I believe, for P4 in this race. As I think, um, now with the DRF podium is a bit too far away. So. Yeah, not, not too long left to go in this race. Do you reckon there's a chance of him catching... I doubt there's much chance of him catching Crispy, except for maybe in the late stages. Do you reckon he could catch him? Do you reckon he's got a chance? Uh, if, if he gets past Griffiths very quickly, then he might, but I think the laps is going to be him more than the pace. And remember, the soft tyres are going to be wearing quite a bit more than medium, so... Uh, I mean, um, as much as power is on the right, uh, on the good strategy, I don't think he's going to get uh, first to Chris Spears. Chris Spears is no mug, of course. He won't just like to know for his teammate. Definitely as, not. Uh, Let's see whether uh, Power can get past the first objective and get past Griffiths first. Well, you definitely want to overtake the Kelly Pass. Don't make, you definitely want to make it down to turn one, but turn turn four is going to look like a good opportunity. Should he get a good exit here? A bit of a slide from Griffiths there in the, on the mediums in the Alpha Tower, and that's going to be all that Power needs. Griffiths pulls over to the right hand side, allowing Quick Power earlier outside, forcing him the long way around, but only forcing him towards the outside of the track there. Of course, obviously. Just clean, fair racing there between those two. But quick power, power quicks around the outside, and that's P4 secure. Now he's going to try and chase down his teammate for that last spot on the rostrum. Yeah, and that is 10 positions gained for power. Um, definitely one of the contestants for the driver there, I imagine. Um, up 10 positions, and obviously, not, not down in Q2. Rebra's attention or not, we still don't know yet. Um, maybe I could ask him after the race, but. Um, yeah, it's a good draft for power. Of course, a good points total for Rusty as well, being a P3 and P4 respectively. As uh, Edzi and Rusty are sort of, um, again, very, very similar at times, but very much still on the pace. As uh, the gap's still staying at two seconds. Edzi has absolutely controlled this race so far from start to finish. He's only got to hold four more laps now to, in order to take victory, though, of course. I, I wouldn't rule anything out yet, just yet until the checker flags drop. I mean, in, in another league, I commentate in opening race the season in Bahrain. The, one of the drivers in the Alpha Romeo led 15. the way. Oh. Corey, I just saw Corey and Bennett coming out and go some of uh, his positions like 10 times there. <laughs> but okay. they're clearly having a good bit of fun in P15 and P16. Keep my eyes on, on Roller here. He makes his way to pass yeah, Ogwin for P6. Easy stuff there on the DRS. And he's not too far away from Griffiths and Parra, who's still going at it here through the, turn, through the opening few corners. Zard, Griffiths is going to have a decent amount of DRS. He's using the ERS as well. Here he goes, he has to go the long way around, similar to how Para did in the first place. He might try a switch back here, he doesn't have enough of a run through, go for it. Rest are though, closing on these two, so it could become a three car battle in the late stages, depending on whether Para gets away or not. 100%, as, uh, yeah, Ben then just about uh, keeping ahead of Corey, but however, Corey's in the fight back for P16, although this is not for points, it's for pride, as Corey goes down the inside of the last season's Division 1 champion. 
in turn one, the silver core ready to make the move. Bennett racing late on him as Bennett actually gets in position for the switch back. But Bennett and Bale to make a move down to turn four. Gets a little bit um, overdone the exit, although another uh, another DRS for some reason. And um, I suppose Bennett is going to go down the inside. Uh, Let's see whether they can keep it clean. I think they will. Oh, Bennett with a better slide there. They're side by side. Could Corey end up on the wrong side of it again? They're clean. It's Bennett. Still going to get side by side. It's Bennett goes down inside the hairpin. What out of P15 we have here on our hands is Corey goes back again. Purely for bragging rights, this. Through turn 10. Been oh, here we go. He's gone way wide, and there goes Corey on the inside with the DRS. Although Bennett's using the ERS, he's still staying with him here. He, he might actually hold on to the spot if Corey backs out. And he does back out only for a moment because he's still there on the inside. And there's a bit of contact. Neither one of them come off worse here. Bennett with a, with a slight touch, you want to stay off that curve there. Could take both of them out. Through, through the start of sector number three, they go. They're still side by side. What a battle this is for. Nothing more than 15th place in the running order. Like I say, purely pragging rights on the line through the last corner. And Corey around yep. the outside. As uh, Griffiths couldn't be able to make a move for power, I think power is now um, just about getting the gap to where it's controllable. As a uh, race follower has actually dropped out of the rest to Griffiths, I believe. Uh, those soft tyres will be falling off, and that's going to allow Mr. Robbie to go back in this race, maybe. Maybe. Um, See. Because the soft tyres. Soft tyres, although they're very fast, they do drop off, and I know they um, struggle with tyre temperatures sometimes, especially with some of the setups these drivers will be running um, to, make, to make them faster. But tyre temperatures, tyre temperatures do come at a cost. As uh, they still go seven by seven, peak fifteen. I think it's going again. It's still going at it. It's great racing. This is. It's only kind of this at the front end of the pack where Mitch has been so dominant all day. I mean, he's just only got just under two laps to go before this race comes to an end. May not, may not even see him cross the line, might, might be too invested in this battle in the late stages. This is this is where it's really at. Yeah, as um, uh, for P9, uh, P8, sorry, Jim Jab is going to get past Idrad. Uh, the PA, up the Jim Jab, like I said, he's going to have a good race, like I said. He is now up to P8 and um, a good recovery drive from getting all down on Q1. Definitely, great stuff from him there. Race for us. They're still going. How is this still going? How have they not made contact yet? I don't know. As all one team Sam had a bit of contact there into turn four. Um, Sam just back into position. As they're still going. I don't know if we've got to say. We need to. We need to keep watching this. This is absolutely insane. Bennett off the last corner towards the line. He's got the DRS and the, what's left of his ERS being deployed. Here he goes. He's gone for the outside. <laughs> What's he doing? There goes the Alfa Romeo. <laughs> and look at this. I don't, I don't want to. Don't don't look now. But Combat's trying to close in behind them as Corey gets back past Bennett. Or still holds on to that position. Oh. Uh, but we are going to look away for a minute because Mitzi is making his, way the making his way into the last corner to begin the final lap of this Bahrain Grand Prix. Absolutely amazing stuff that going on behind. I'm sure he has no idea what's been happening. I think Corey may have the better, may have the better of him for the time being. Last lap of the Grand Prix though, for Midzi. I must say, a great driver. Of course, all the controversy and all the, um, all the disappointment of last season has quickly put that behind his back. I know that, uh, of course, it's very frustrating as anyone would be, but he's re responded in the best way possible. Um, is he rushed there? Of course, his first race in the beginning division but we know how fast he is he's pretty proved that he can be at the top of the grid despite not racing the uh, first time racing in this division uh two house cars of uh Chris and power did very well the constructors uh and although Griffiths is still uh very much chance in his final lap and race rollers up there as well just don't look now here they come this is gonna get this could be interesting for this on this last lap with everyone having drs apart from of course power clicks on those soft tires so race roller could be in a very good position here on this last lap there's also uh could get up on me as well. Um, oh, could, could, could see another late move there. Griffiths as closing in. He, he yeah. has one last real shot to go for this one. I doubt he'll get it. He's got very little ERS left, but he's putting all of it in. He's closing. He could go for it late on the brakes. Nope, stays in line. Race roller just staying hanging back, looking just to try and I'm mid seat. Yep. Like mid -seat. Here he comes. He's, reco he's recovered from that defeat in the championship in the best way possible by taking the opening race when he's doing the Valtteri Bottas. Here comes Midzi towards the line to win the season opener. 
the Bahrain Grand Prix. Rusty comes home in second. Crispy will complete the podium. And here comes Parag of Quicks holding off. Race Roller who's trying around the outside of Griffiths. It's not over yet. There's a bit of contact. And Race Roller goes wide. And that's going to be all Griffiths needs. But here comes Race Roller back around the outside. And by the tightest of margins, Race Roller holds on and takes fifth place away. Orgreen in seventh. Jib Jeff eighth. I think Griffiths knew he pushed Red Roller off the track, so I should let him through, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and it's looked like it by. Oh. D -d Division's crashed, sent it over the line. Wonderful stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um. As the Here it comes! Again, and time. combat's closing in, he's now within a second, it's not over yet. They're coming side by side, who's gonna win this one? This is the most important battle of the day. Here comes. Corey and Bennett, they're still going at it and combat's closing in. He's now within half a second. He's using that ERS. He could sneak out from right underneath their noses here. They come towards the last corner. Who's going to come out on top here? This is amazing stuff. Corey gets the edge of the last corner. Bennett might go for it. He's lost control of the car and around he goes. Bennett won't make the line. Combat comes home behind us. Corey spins in front of combat. Wow. What a finish that was. What just... <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, man. What a finish. Just oh, I accidentally pressed the wrong button. Very quick, it's worthy to drive the day there. Yeah. Very much deserving. Owen believes it should be Mizzy, Midzi or Para, because both of them putting great drivers. Midzi on the top step of the podium, Rusty in second, and Crispy in third place. And I, I would just like to bring it back to um, to Jamham earlier on in the session. He said, who said we're qualifying Midzi, Rusty, Crispy. You've got it right in the race. So there's that, of course. Yeah, both Midzi and Para in particular are putting in great drives. And, of course, the clean battle from uh, Corey and Bennett until right at the last corner deserves an honourable mention for me. But, yeah, great stuff. Oh, man, what, what do you think of that one? Very exciting, I must admit. Um, I'd expect the thought it was going to be because of the DRS trains. But, uh, especially their battle for P15, <laughs> I, like, I like the race. But I uh, very much was there from uh, Midzi there to take the W. Right. And get the first 25 points of the season. All right, so there we go. So here's your final final results then from tonight's race. Minty takes the win ahead of, ahead of Rusty in second place. Crispy rounds at the podium. It's Paraquicks in fourth. Race roller fifth. Decent start to start the fence with 10 points to kick things off. Griffiths in sixth. Ogwin in seventh. Jib Jab eighth. Zydrad in ninth. And Sam rounds at your top 10. Monkey fought back to try and take the points. He finishes 11th in the end. Division in 12th. SLR Connor 13th. Rigsy 14th. Corey in 15th. Combat 16th. Bennett 17th. Our last... Technically, didn't actually make it to the end of the race. Crowding 18th, Merck's 19th, and Ghost Colt in 20th. Right then. So, try to run your then. Uh, do you want to do P2 and 3 now? Do P1? Or do you, which one do you do? You decide. Do you want to, do you uh, yeah, yeah, I'm done with that. You can do P1, I'll do P2 and P3. Okay, no worries then. So, wait, are you, do, are you doing crispy then? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll do crispy. Okay, cool. Ready whenever you are. All right, then. Well, first, first of all, our um, our third place finisher in tonight's race, which was of course crispy. So congratulations on the podium, mate. You did, did a really good job there. Of course, did you think at any point you'd be able to catch R Rusty or potentially even Midzi at any point in the race? Do you reckon you could you could have closed in on them on the right strategy? Um, no, no, not really. Um, I'll be honest with myself. I don't. Didn't really quite have the pace them two did, to be honest. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I, yeah. throughout the race, particularly on the first stint with the sauce, I struck, I struggled with the tyres a lot. Um, didn't, didn't start on the best where, and then yeah, throughout the whole stint, really, I just kind of struggled. Um, yeah, and then obviously, I think with the second stint, there was a bit of a bit of traffic. I mean, I think I got undercut by crowding as well, which set Rusty clear. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Nah, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't. I don't think I was going to catch them today. Just pace was a little, a little bit off it today. All right. Well, still a podium finish. Done really well there. Do you, are you pleased with how the, how the season started for you? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't, yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's still. Yeah. Still a good start. Can't. Can't go wrong with a podium. It's. it's you know. Bahrain's one of my sort of decent tracks at the game. So. Yeah. Can't go wrong really. I'm. Yeah. I'm happy with the start. Just hope to push on and carry on now. Oh uh, yeah, we'll definitely carry on to the next race. Of course, Imola up next. Do you reckon you can give us a result there? It's, um, I'm not sure, to be honest. It's, I'm a pad driver. It's not exactly a massive pad track. So, um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right, well, 
I'll cut the stuff off you there. We'll move on to Rusty. Of course, Fed come home in second place. Did a really good job there today, mate. Did you feel like you could catch Midsy in the late stages, or did you feel like there wasn't much hope on that front? Uh, no, I there's no way I was catching. There was uh, points where I would catch, but then um, I know Midsy was running a bit uh, lower wings, so he had a better straight line speed and just gained all the time back up on the main straight. Alright, well, like I say, second place, still very good start. Do, do you reckon, do you, reckon you, you would have been happy with the victory today, or do you reckon uh, the, you, you content with the second place? Well, my quality kind of decided my race, to be fair. In, invalidating on the second to last corner, um, on for a front row, and that's put his cars in between mid which wasn't the best. Um, but. I'm, I'm happy with P2, it podium's a podium, but I know that I could have done better. Alright, give, give me your, your aspirations for the season. Do you reckon you can go on and give us a few more podiums of the course of the season, maybe even a race win or two? Do you reckon you can do that for us? That's the aim, but I don't want to jinx anything yet, so it's going to be a tough season. So we'll wait and see. Alright. And then I'll be supposed to move on to you at mid then. Yep. So then mid uh bouncing back in true mid style. Um, getting the win after this disappointment last season. Just talk us through your race and how you managed the gap and um, how qualifying went as well. Getting pole position. Have a race ready. Uh, yeah, I mean, Polly, I just hooked up nicely. I was obviously got a bit lucky with Rusty not picking it up. Um, but I bought a point three as well. My middle sector, obviously, was still a really good lap. And, and yeah, then the race, I just knew I had to get a really good start, and I did. Just me and Toby were battling. Um, yeah, and I had pulled out a DRS pretty early. I knew Rusty was quick. Obviously, like you said, I was running low wins compared to him. And once he got past uh, Toby and Chris V, obviously he had really good pace and we just kind of kept pushing each other along. Each lap went on because I was setting really consistent laps and I was checking the gap to Rusty and obviously it was, it was going up and down all the time. And then we were just pulling away. But no offense to Chris V, just pulling away quite a bit from Chris V in the end. Um, but yeah, that yeah, was a really good race. Nice, clean race. Well done to uh, Frosty and Chris Beers, two really good drivers. Yep, um, of course the main talking point will be um, that championship. Of course, stepped away from you last season. Do you feel like you can take the, um, the trophy home this time? Uh, do you feel confident you can? Um, you have to back yourself, I guess. Uh, can't do this time, I'm such an ego. I would, I would if uh, Rusty <laughs> was a race, to be honest. Uh, but, I think um, I can be really strong at tracks that aren't too realised there. But like for example, next week at Imola, I had pretty good pace. But with Rusty racing, if he's if he's on it, I'm probably gonna get like, absolutely clapped. So yeah, I mean, even if I get second again, well, just just hope to be more consistent really and just show that I've got more pace than I did last season. Yeah, yeah, consistency is gonna be key. Um, well done, your victory. And like I said, well done to the rest of the guys on the podium and uh, stay locked in. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, mate. Yeah, well done, mate. Do you want to end the stream, Zach? Or do you want to um, uh, say goodbye? Uh, before, before we go, I would, I would like to ask your thoughts. Give me give me the race out of 10, what do you reckon? Uh, uh, for the battle for P15 alone, I'm going to say 10. Um, <laughs> I think we, we, we didn't get the, we didn't get the um, insane battle at the front, which maybe we, we wanted, but... Yeah, just for the battle for P15 alone between Corey and Ben, I'll give it a 10. <laughs> Firstly, I, I, I give the race an 8, personally, just purely because you said we didn't get much of the fight up front. But of course, that, that battle, those battles in the mid-pack were definitely very entertaining. My first ever race in an in SLR, and I'm definitely looking forward to more. Alright, well with that then, that will be the end of the stream. We do hope everyone's enjoyed it, and hope you tune in for the next week's McKean Division race. Of course, tune in tomorrow night for the opening race of Division 1, which will be taking place at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, if I'm not mistaken. So, Yes, it is. I am racing as well, so you're going to see me um, race uh, to the comment instead of to commentating. So, yeah, you see my epic driving. So, <laughs> sounds good. I'm sure everyone will tune into that. All right, so thank you, thank you, thank everyone so much for watching, and we shall see you all in the next SLR event. So, goodbye. <laughs>